very tough. The competition is very fierce, and customers are reluctant to spend money. Given that background, we decided to bring the January sale forward through to December to try and make deals available to customers that are attractive to them, to encourage consumers to spend money in the shops in the pre-Christmas period as well as post-Christmas. But for many shoppers, the only option is window shopping. I'm unemployed, I've got no money, and I know there's lots of people in my situation, they've got no money at all, so it's a very bad Christmas issue, I'm afraid. I'd like to take advantage of it, but as I say, we haven't got the money, so we haven't been able to. The British Retail Consortium says business in the high street is tough. The absence of consumer confidence and the recent budget means customers are cautious. Stores are having to take drastic measures, squeezing margins and profits. Traders can only dream of a return to the free spending 80s, but with little prospect of that, unseasonal sales are set to become a sign of the times. Well, next, one woman's answer to the chore of posting hundreds of Christmas cards. Graphic designer Lucian Roberts decided not to bother this year. Instead, she's sending seasonal greetings to her friends with her own personal poster on the London Underground. Advertising on the tube is nothing new, but Lucienne Roberts' personal Christmas message is a first. Sending out greetings to family, friends and colleagues, all 350 of them, including her cat. As a designer, I'm always aware of how important London Transport has been in design history. There's the tube map and a lot of the posters they commissioned during the sort of 30s and 40s and now as well had quite a significant role in design. So for many reasons it seemed like it would be a good, fun thing to do. With a budget of £250, Lucienne has put up ten posters at those stations she thinks her friends are most likely to use. But it's hardly a cheap way to send good cheer. So will it catch on? I'd like to do it myself. <laughs> it's quite good, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't do it because I, I'm artistically challenged, but um, I can see it catching on with other artists. I think it's a very good idea. Yes. And Lucienne is certainly smitten with the idea. Next year, she wants to go bigger and better. Well, in sports, some news concerning Formula One. Nigel Mansell could be driving for Benetton next season, as speculation mounts that the Didcot-based Williams team will opt for David Coulthard to partner Damon Hill. And in football, Nottingham Forest's former England midfielder Neil Webb says he's applied for the vacant manager's job at Reading. Webb started his career at the Berkshire Club. Well, finally, a look at the weather for Christmas Day. Uh, mist and fog will thin slowly, but it'll stay rather grey. And after a frosty start, temperatures will rise to around 6 Celsius, 43 Fahrenheit in the afternoon, with rain likely around dusk. Well, that's it from all of us here on Newsroom South East. Have a very happy and peaceful Christmas. It's what dreams are made of. Christmas Eve on BBC One. The decorations up? Well, nearly. The cake's iced? Well, nearly. And the cat gets it. Has he been doctored? <laughs> Lottery dreams at 10 to 8. Just the right six numbers and they'll all come true. Good news from Holby at 5 past 8. Sure thing, thank you. I got you. Now this is amazing. Chris, a pop star, and Sharon, well, connected. How's the family? Don't ask. <laughs> In your dreams. Wake up, sweetheart. After the news, Emma Thompson and Kenneth Branagh star in the film premiere, Dead Again. Mike, someone wants to kill me. Those are just dreams. Midnight Mass is at 11.45, Christmas Eve on BBC One. This is Mr. Kimball, your new kindergarten teacher. They're six-year-olds. How much trouble can they be? Shut up! Kindergarten Cop. Boxing Day. 6.25. Animated adventure from Steven Spielberg, now on BBC One, and another epic journey for the Mouskowitz family. Christmas movie magic on BBC One. Everything I do, I do it for you. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Christmas Day, 6.45. Boxing Day on BBC One, and Auntie's got some new bloomers. 
And the chaos continues at 6.25 when Big Arnie is put in charge of some little darlings. Turn up! EastEnders is at 10 past 8. And how is Grant feeling now that the traumas of Christmas Day are over? Oh, I've never been happier. Now, why don't I believe that? Believe it. At 8.40, size up Christmas with the Porters. Whenever <laughs> At 10 past 9. Screams in the night. It can only mean one thing. The Adams family are getting into the Christmas spirit. So why not drop in? At 11, Radio 1 joins forces with BBC One for the Prince's Trust Gala concert. Boxing Day on BBC One. Where can you find a vocal virtuoso? Old MacDonald had a farn, E-I-E-I-O, and on a farn he had a horn. <laughs> a well-balanced Norwegian, a flexible waitress, and a familiar host. I want you to have a good laugh at the trick I do on him, because the one I do on you is worse. Join Paul Daniels for an evening at Secrets, Thursday at 8 on BBC One. The draw for the National Lottery is in just over an hour here on BBC One after Bruce Forsyth and a festive generation game.